This is awesome, folks. This, I feel like, is where we're headed. We don't have to be engineers, folks. We just need to get stuff done. We're going to make a part today. We're going to download it off of GrabCAD, and then we're going to do most of the CAM in Fusion 360, which I think is really easy. And the goal is you don't have to be a CAM expert to make these parts. Um, those turkeys at Autodesk don't have the turning side of Fusion 360 out yet, so we're going to have to do that in Sprut Cam. We're going to turn the shaft uh, of this Bridgeport knee crank on the Tormach lathe, then we're going to machine the top side on the Tormach mill. Should be a really helpful handy part because uh, I am lazy. I really didn't want to keep cranking that wheel to lift the uh, knee of that Bridgeport up and down. So welcome to another Wednesday widget. If you don't know what GrabCAD is, stop what you're doing. Actually, don't stop what you're doing. Keep watching this video, but make a note to go check it out. GrabCAD is amazing, a repository. So far as I know, everything is free. Um, either I just, or sometimes you can actually find Fusion 360 or SolidWorks models that you can download as parametric models. I was thinking, I want this Bridgeport knee crank. So I went and I typed in Bridgeport knee crank. Thinking, honestly, we're not gonna necessarily find anything. Boom, there's one. One's all we need. Take a look. I think this is actually was in SolidWorks. Yeah, amazing, folks. For free. It's right here, and this is only growing. Um, the only thing that stinks about GrabCAD is the stupid website won't remember my password like every other website will. So it's really annoying that you have to re-log in. Just a pet peeve. So we're downloading that file, and we're going to pop into Fusion 360, where I've got it open. And if we take a look, Here's what she is. We're gonna. You, this will be for a, a drill press, and then this part here, as you can see, will slide into the sort of spline fit on the knee of the bridge port, and then we can use a drill to raise and lower the knee much easier, much faster. Now, we need to move this into Sprut Cam to turn this part right here, and I was thinking, wait a minute here, I don't really want this to be that long. Um, oh, actually, I have two major gripes for Autodesk on this. One is annoying and can get fixed, which is I want to just always be able to click on two faces or two contours and have it display the distance somewhere live. I don't want to click inspect, have to open a new window, click plus, and then click on you know two faces and have it pop this up because you just, you're always measuring parts. So I wish that was um, live like it is in SolidWorks. The other thing is much, much bigger, which is you cannot change units. Uh, well, the other thing I was about to complain about was that you can't change units from millimeters to inches. And for some reason, this was coming up in millimeters. Now it's coming up in inches. So I don't know what I did. I was researching this, and it seemed like at some point maybe that it was or is still a problem in Autodesk, which is once you commit to one unit of measurement, you can't change. So um, I'll shut up on that because I've got inches, which is what I want. And this is... Here we go, 1.2 inches. I don't need that much to hold it in the drill chuck. So we don't have this as a parametric model. It's just an eye, so I can't go and edit the length of the shaft like that. So let's, let's do it anyways. Let's do a circle on this plane, and we'll just come create whatever, and we will do right-click, press pull. Now here you do, it's going to want to default to assuming that your doing a new body and we're actually wanting to cut so we can change it to cut and then you can drag this thing down and we can just shorten it up to whatever distance you want like so now you notice we're left with this little thing right here i don't really know exactly why i don't really care click it hit delete key oh another huge thing if you are a solidworks user the way to make fusion 360 work correctly go to preferences general pan, zoom, and orbit, and change it to from Fusion to SolidWorks. If you're not a SolidWorks user, you won't care about that. If you are, you'll love it. Now, we do. We are left with this sort of hole here. We want to close that gap up. You know, probably don't have to, but let's just do it anyways. So we need to insert a plane so that we can sketch on this uh, face that's perpendicular to this contoured shaft. So. We, to insert a plane, if we look at our options, two edges, three points, tangent. Three points to me looks like it's the easiest, but we have one point here, one point there. We need a third point. So we don't have one. Let's make one sketch point, and we'll see if we can do this. Okay, well, it took me there, but that's probably okay because, look, I can snap on here, and I don't care where the point is. You only need three, so... 
I think I got it. Stop sketch. And now we'll do construct plane through three points. And we'll choose one, two. Actually, we can choose either. I think that's probably the one I made. We can choose this one. And look, now we got a plane. Now we can insert a center diameter circle. Click on the plane we just made. And let it snap to here and then right click press pull and select the face and we can say come out you know it's actually kind of interesting the more you're zoomed in the more resolution you have the more you zoom out in terms of how you drag I think Let's see if that's true yeah exactly there you're 10 millimeters if you zoom way in you get less increments so let's just say negative 0.25 and we're good. Let's undo that, sorry, and let's do this. Let's push pull it a little more, negative, negative one, and now what I want to do is modify chamfer, and let's chamfer that to 0.5. Now I've got what I wanted, just an edge break on that leading chamfer, and a shorter piece. So let's export this, and let's first hop into Sprout Cam. Project Import, modified knee and we need to get it oriented so go click on control a and do transform rotate this will be around the Z 180 click apply and then locate zero for lathe we'll do max min min apply close and now you can see it's oriented like so except I didn't select that for some reason There we go. And lathe actually is really easy. We covered it in detail in another video. You can see that here. We'll go through it real quick. New lathe facing. And what we'll do first is we'll, at, we'll manually control the work piece. So cylinder around part on the X. Uncheck the stupid same stock thing and do positive axial. That's going to add material in the front of the part of 0.05 close you can see we added a little material right there with that positive axial and then facing for me it'll be tool one and we'll do 350 change the cut feed value of uh, cut per rev feed per rev down to like eight thou and we'll do ten thou finish cut we'll do as 50 percent of the speed and you can see there we get two passes on the feed and the more axial stock you add there the more passes you'll get and then all we need to do is uh, contouring new lathe contouring and then choose this fit oops let's see here go back to here choose the chamfer here 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 click roughing and again for me it's tool one and we'll do 350 we'll do point oh point oh one ten thou and the same thing we'll do slower finish and sometimes it goofs oh looks like oh you know what I didn't select the right geometry hold on there we go I think that'll do it and then sometimes it goofs you got to change the direction like so I'm going to change the lead in a little more lead out a little actually that looks pretty good and boom that's all we need to do for lathe okay back in fusion 360 I already learned something which is units we can actually set them to inches here so I apologize I was wrong glad to see that that was not an issue now one of the things I noticed is the this dimension between this point and that point is 0.163 so that means we're going to have to use a 1 8 inch end mill. I don't stock end mills between fractional sizes that small. But we're really close to 1 8 7 5 or 3 16 And I would much rather use a 3 16 end mill, especially when we're cutting steel like this. So let's go ahead and modify this. We'll go, let's see, yeah, we're in the model. We'll do a sketch on this plane. And we'll do a circle. You know, and we'll just say 1.2. 
probably more than we need. And we'll do press pull and we'll do, well, you can do, go this way. And, um, extents, we can see two, we should be able to click that face, we'll click OK. Oops, I don't know why I'm not able to um, edit anymore. I lost that window down here. I don't know. Delete that and try that again. We will do a cut to distance to choose here. There we go. Red. Hmm. Well, that's not fun. You know what it is? Is it's um it's not starting low enough on the plane. Let's see if we can fix that. It's annoying. So the way to fix that, I think. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but it will be to insert a plane, offset a plane. So click here and click point one. So we'll set, make a plane higher than the part. And now we'll try sketching 1.2, push pull, and we'll do a cut to this. Huh. Man. Uh, that's new to me. I don't like that at all. That would be a no-brainer in uh, in SolidWorks. Hmm. Okay, sorry. We have to cheat, which I'm kind of bummed about. Somebody tell me what I'm doing wrong in Fusion 360. In, in SolidWorks, this is simple. We'll just create a sketch on this plane, normal 2, so we can look at it square on, create a sketch, circle, dimension that. We said 1.2, and then we will do features extrude cut, to surface and choose this guy and boom now if we take a look at this measurement well actually it'll be easier to sketch a line there we go we can see point two inches that's plenty of clearance for five sixteenths and I think we're still going to have plenty of engagement, and I don't think we're going to chip these teeth off or cause any problems like that. So that's what we're going to try. Back, We'll hop back into Fusion 360 here. Okay, let's bang through the cam. I will tell you right now we're going to want to put in an axle for um, axis, sorry, to create our cam offset. So cam, we're going to do setup, and this is going to be what creates our XYZ origin. And we're going to do choose, select x or z axis and, and x axis. So the z axis will be that axis we just created, and then the x can be just one of these. And that looks right, except let's edit our stock to be fixed size cylinder of 1.625, and the length. I don't need that much on the top, although this is going to be band, so we're not going to part it in the lathe. It's too thick um, it's in diameter. So we'll band saw it off and just trim the top down. But one point, oops. Hold on. Goof that up. Adjust the length to say 3.8, 3.9, or something. Just we're going to face it off. Um, so 2D. Face, select our tool, we'll do the Superfly, OK, That's the Superfly is that big black tool, you'll see it in the video here when we actually machine it off. Um, usually you can just basically uh, click OK, we should get a decent tool path, looks good to me. Now 2D Adaptive Clearing, it's a tool we're going to use, they got to get why they do this now. I, I don't care about these sample libraries and you can't default them to delete them or default them. I care about my library which is tool, in this instance tool 77. Um, I want to adjust the, this is a 3 16th four fluid end mill from Lakeshore Carbide. We're going to run it at 3300 and um, you know 10 inches a minute. That's um, about 0.75 thou or 7 tenths of a thou. You really don't want to go under one thou per chip load. In fact, let's bump it up to 12 
that's a lot closer to a thou. Otherwise, you're going to rub. We're hoping to do a whole series on tooling and feeds and speeds with Carl from Lakeshore Carbide, but a whole other conversation. Um, lead in feed rate can be 12 as well. Normally, it saves all this stuff, but I don't have this tool really set up. We can plunge it for if, okay. Now, the geometry here, we need to basically select all these tabletops here, but you can't click on the actual face. You need to click on the 2D contour. So what happens is you can alternate between these two, and one of the things I don't like is, let's say you get this one. Oh, hell, I can't even get this one right now. But then let's say on this one, you accidentally click here. you got to basically delete everything and start over, so far as I can tell. So here's my little trick for that. You zoom in, if you click and hold, you can choose the edge that you want, and we want that edge. Click and hold, we want that edge. And now here, that one's on the wrong side, so just click on the red arrow, it pops over. Fast forward through the rest of this. Okay, that's good. Now stock contours, you do want to check that, and here, we should be able to just select this bottom face here and click OK. And OK, all I got to do is change the plane it's machining on. So bottom height is, sorry, I'll slow down. The third tab here, heights, bottom height, change it to selection and then just choose this. Click OK. Perfect, almost. It's not going all the way through, I bet, because it defaulted to leaving stock, which I don't want to do. Now it should go all the way through. Hmm. Okay, I think I figured it out, which is I had to reduce the minimum cutting radius from, you know, 0.018 or something to 5 thou. Now it's going to go all the way through. Um, but we need to do one more thing, which is we want to add the center circle. I'll show you right now. We don't add that center circle. It doesn't think it has to cut in the middle. It thinks the hole is already there. And that's not good. As you can see, on a render, it's going to be burying the end mill here all the way around, right there. No good. Easy to fix. Under the stock contour selection, all we need to do is add this. Click OK. Perfect. Now we've got a functional toolpath, uh, and this is how I, a lot of times I think, but I think, well, wait a minute here. I've got all this big area in here, no reason to use a smaller end mill there. So let's right click and choose copy. I was thinking there was a duplicate, but I'm thinking HSM, and then right, and then should be able to hit paste. And we've added that again, and then let's just go change this first one to a quarter inch tool. And, okay, see what we get here? Perfect, much better. And obviously it can't get in those nooks and crannies. Now, we can just leave this as is. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Somewhere is an option to do a rest machining, which will only machine what hasn't been removed from prior operations. As it goes right now, we're going to end up recutting a, a lot of the existing stuff that's been cut. Now actually, ironically, one way we can change that is to go back and take out the all that extra stock that we had added to get the center hole in there and go back to the original stock. And now it'll just be focused on cutting around the perimeter like so. The other thing we can do in fact, let's do this. We'll suppress this one, and we'll go to 2D, and we'll do just do a 2D contour. And this time, what we should be able to do is, this is a lot easier. We can do, just select that, and bottom height was from contour. That's fine. We'll climb mill it, and we can do like a, we can do a finish pass, I'm sure. Um, or you know what we can do is we can do a, roughing pass and we'll just say actually we'll we'll just do it in two depths and we'll just do it in two depths of cut point one that way we aren't uh, taking too much at once I don't think it'll be an issue and let's see here I've got the chain on the wrong side that looks better okay how tall is this thing again 
2.2. I only want it in two passes. Oh, you know what? I think it's got the wrong height on it. The top height is not stock. It should be model top. Now it'll do it in two passes. Perfect. Now, last two things. Drill. Uh, and we're actually, stay tuned for the machining video. We're going to try a little secret. We actually need to get this out to a little over 5 eighths. We're going to just drill at 5 eighths for now. So tool, actually I'm going to add the speeds and feeds later. We'll just focus on the cam for now. Whole bottom, whole top, that looks fine. We'll peck it with a full retract and we can go in 50 thou. And we're going to do this with a half inch drill. don't like that the, they just changed the tool library on me here literally like it pushed an update the other day and I don't know um, how to add a tool which is ridiculous so I'll come back to that later um, we're, we'll do well you guys see that drilling operation there probably giving me an error well I can't for the life of me figure out why it won't let me drill I think it has to do with I can't select the geometry so Maybe that has something to do with the file, which which is quickly ruining my uh, pitch of download something from GrabCAD and have it work right away. But not going to be on my last tutorial on Fusion 360, so we'll figure that out and deal with it later. Uh, let's redeem that by showing a better way we can do that cleanup pass. And if we take a look at that model, remember the quarter inch was roughing it out. All we really need to do now is go around and trim each one of these. So let's do it a smarter way than we had it. Do 2D contouring. We're going to choose that three sixteenths tool and then what we can do is we'll select one piece of geometry that one put it put the edge on the right side this time which is great heights from selection anytime you have any problems go manually select the heights I find that that's a way to make sure you're getting it exactly how you want it 0.2 inches down and I don't think I need to put anything else here. And we click OK. And we've got one of those. Make a pattern, right click, add to new pattern, direct, uh, see your linear pattern, no circular pattern, axis is that center axle. They'll, they'll automatically do equal spacing, so we just hit nine, click OK. There we go. We got nine of them. So now let's do a simulation render. on the correct thing, sorry. Okay, Superfly cleans it up. Quarter inch and helical interpolates into the center. Should be a nice way to cut that and not plunge straight down. It's doing most, the bulk of the machining, which is good. You can see it's actually able to get pretty close in there. And you know, I think now that we look at this, we'll go back and we'll add one thou, so it's right here as we do this cleanup where we should have a really clean edge and if the diameter of those tools are happen to be off by a few tenths you probably won't see it because 3 sixteenths will be doing all of the final cutting which I like. Okay, get out of the simulation and just edit this and under stock to leave which is that passes tab <laughs> oops we already had something checked why did I check that we'll change it from zero here and we'll just go to two thou there and that's a wrap folks sorry we can't figure out the drilling kind of weird but uh am i frustrated about that sure am i gonna give up on fusion 360 not at all because of the value so if you want to watch us machine it you can click here otherwise folks take care see you soon